customer service with a family touch. Broadcasting from the Paddock Mall Studios, this is WOCA, Ocala, Gainesville, The Villages, 1370 AM, 96.3 FM, The Source. Five minutes after 9 o'clock, it is time for Master Gardener Carol Ann Baldwin. The phone lines are open, so if you have a question about your lawn, your garden, or your apple tree in a coffee cup, you can call Carol Ann right now. The number is 622-9622, and uh, Carol Ann's show is a full hour show, so you have plenty of time to get a nice, nice, hearty answer. You need, you sometimes you need a hearty you answer. Need a hearty yeah, answer. Yeses and noes don't always work with gardening, so I, I kind of learned that in the course of years of doing yeah. this. Oh my gosh! Good morning, Carolyn. How good are you? Good morning, Larry. Real good, real good. Yeah. So you guys. Oh, let me show you. Go. You haven't, oh, seen, you haven't yes. been here two weeks. Right, right. Can you tell us bigger now? Uh, it, you can, can actually. You? It's getting yeah. The leaves are much larger. It looks like it's it's doing it. Looks like it's trying to put on a couple more. See that little thing in the middle? The top. We, yeah, we kind of watched up. that from a little. Yeah. Baby, nothing, and now yeah, it's, it's getting bigger and bigger. A leaf all by itself. Yeah getting bigger i just hope it doesn't get attacked by anything <clears throat> no in here it shouldn't now let me ask you something about this yeah this is a cup with no a no hole, drainage no hole right, in the bottom. right is that a problem um do i need to put it in a pot that has a hole it in the would, bottom? It, it's eventually going to need a pot because it'll need what more water yeah or it's the problem is when you don't have any drainage in there and you over water it sits there in water and water and you don't remo- want that. You don't want that. It yeah. rots it or something. It'll rot. It'll um, overwatering in a pot will take away the oxygen out of the soil, and the roots need oxygen in oh, the soil. Oh, really? So it kind so, of drowns in a right, way. Right. Oh, wow! Didn't know that. Yeah. All right. kind of, yeah. The, and that's actually that's what we call it. People drown their plants when they you know keep the saucers underneath them too much oh, with okay. too much water in them. I mean, it's okay to have the saucer when you water and it drains some, so that you're not staining the coffee table or the floor wherever you've got that plant placed. But just make sure it's not sitting in water all the time. Oh, yeah, okay. So that's, all right. So my my next emission then is to go to one of these places that sells flower pots and. Yeah, I ought to just bring you a pot. I mean, I got tons of. Them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but there's a store next door. Yeah, that's true. You might find something neat that <laughs> just sort of represents the apple tree or Although, something Although, like you know, I'll yeah. tell you this. The, the store next door that I'm talking about has mm-hmm. no, uh, I, I mean, they, uh, and uh, this is sort of a plug for uh, yeah. Bob Wines, I guess. But Bob Wines has some really nice, fl- uh, what do you call it, bird, bird baths. Oh, oh, yeah. yeah and that's yeah. what I really, oh, I want to get yeah. a nice, big, heavy. B- oh, yeah, nice concrete I have a bed. feeling the other ones that I saw over the next door right. could be stolen. And I, I just, you know. I, well, now they sell, they sell concrete ones, too, or they should. I you mean see any. that You're talking that next door, not that next door. <laughs> <laughs> We're just oh, pointing out the window. I'm talking about Ollie's. I'm talking oh, about Ollie's. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, those ones are probably lightweight. Yeah, they're they could. Plastic. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're uh, rosin or that kind of thing where they're lightweight. But, you know, usually, you know, a lot of folks will buy them because they are cute. Um, but there are some other um, cute concrete ones, and that's probably what Bob wants. hair is lighter. Does. You look good. Thank you. I just, I'm just, it's just seeing yeah, you for the first yeah. time. I'm, I'm so distracted by everything. But, yeah. I just looked at you for the first time. Is it the sun lightens your hair? Yeah, with a little help. Oh, uh, okay, okay. A little help. What do you use, lemon juice or something? Uh, it's a s- similar sun in. Good old, good old sun in from the, s- what is that, 60s and 70s. And, yeah. You do have a phone call already. Oh, fantastic. Good morning. You're on the air with Carol Ann. Oh, did I do something Uh-oh. wrong? Good morning. You're on. Oh, they're not there. I don't hear anybody. D- did I not do that right? If you if you were just calling and I cut you off, I apologize. Just call back. I, pr- I probably hit the wrong button. 
I'm a little being distracted a shit, yeah, today. Being you gotta do everything manual. Yeah. You see it's this like, blank screen over here? Yes. I find myself con- as a habit. It, oh, sure. You're supposed to look at, at it, it because Ay-y-y-y. that's what you've done for every day for yeah. however many years. Yeah. But no, it's it's um, it's a hot one out there, and it's gonna be. You know, here we're we're. You might as well say first of June. Oh, we got the call back. Yeah, I think so. All right. Good morning. You're on the air with Carol Ann. Good morning. How are you this morning? Good morning. How are you? I'm good. Um, Larry, yes, you do have to watch out for bugs on that plant if you overwater it, yep. which most everybody does on their house plant. Yeah. So what is the, what is the proper amount to water it? What do I do? Well, it's a small you one. You finger. just yeah, you use the finger <laughs> method. You check and see if it's dry. You use your finger. You tell me. <laughs> tell me. I don't okay. know what I'm, pass the coffee. I don't cup know what here. I'm feeling. Yeah, oh, it's plenty. Yeah, it's plenty moist. That's good. Okay. Yeah, okay. actually, probably a little Larry. too wet. Actually, it's too wet. Okay. Yeah, but we're gonna fix. Now it. I know. Larry, what you gotta stick your finger down in deep because I'd, it stays wet or further down than yeah. on the top. And this one, the top is wet, so we got it's. Yeah, it doesn't need water for a while. It's too wet. That's what most people do. Yep. Okay. That's what most people do to all their plants. Yep. Yeah, they do. They love them to death. All right. Well, now I know what too wet feels like. I didn't know what too wet felt like. Yeah. Well, well you usually want a, what what feels like a wrung out sponge. Look at you put it in the middle. It wasn't. Yes, I, no, it wasn't. It was sort of leaned to one side, so I stood it up. Wow, that's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know I could do that without breaking it. Oh yeah, plants are tough. <laughs> oh, I think she hung up. Thank you for the call. By the way, <laughs> thanks, Sharon. Yes, he needs to be reminded sometimes. But no, it's it's doing it's doing all right. But yes, it is a little bit wet. And again, it's one of those things. There is no drainage that you have to keep in mind that a that something that small. You're probably looking at the quantity or of like a tablespoon of water at a time. And how often is that a time a day? Uh, no, no, probably you know maybe once a week. Once a week? Yeah. Holy mackerel! No wonder it's yeah. too wet. I've been. Yeah. You know what I've been doing? I've been putting it's just my hand. The little dribble of water that's left in the bottle or something. No, or? I put my hand in the under the faucet and uh-huh. then I just let it drip off my hand. Okay. And I've been doing that every morning. Yeah, that's probably too much. Okay. Yeah, let it let it go a few days. Let that dry out. Uh, phone line is open if you want to call Carol Ann about your plants, gardens. The number six two two nine six two two. We've got rain in the forecast every <laughs> afternoon for a whole week. It looks like. Let's hope. Let's hope that there's uh, yeah. uh, that we start to get that rain. It's been uh, awfully hot, awfully dry, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and and we're you know the watering restrictions now and fire bans are you know and all of that are. Mary County still under still under the fire ban, yeah. and I really think those other counties really ought to pay attention. And just, you know, why lift it, you know, while we're still yeah. so much on yeah. the edge of being wet enough to uh, to get through it. Now, if you have gotten any rain, you're probably seeing, and as I'm looking over here at the horses, that you're going to have to then mow the grass. So do it in the morning while it's cool. Um you know, and that way you're not going to end up with the heat stroke, and and the grass itself won't be as stressed as trying to wait till later in the morning when it starts to get real hot, and it actually begins to stress that grass. Um, if you, I, I'm trying to remember now, are we on the water? We have a day? water restriction once a year. One day yeah. a week. Yeah. Make it count. Yeah. Water thoroughly. Make sure you water deeply. Um, that kind of thing. I. I believe that the micro irrigation is still exempt so if you have it micro was. irrigation yes, right. on was. your shrubs and things like that still don't water them every day they don't need that but when you do need to water them it, which you're looking at probably every 10 days if we can get water every 10 days you don't need to run those either um so you know pay pay attention on that did you say the phone screen yes ringing? yes you do have a phone call good morning you're on there with carolyn Good morning, guys. Good morning. Why does it feel like Monday? Uh, no, I had to work yesterday. Oh, oh. <laughs> okay. And hey, Larry, too. <laughs> yeah. Say, uh, with the water restriction now down to one day, would you know, like uh, for where I live, it's Wednesdays and Saturday. Would you know which day we could water, or do you have it, or can you make your own decision on that? Um, you know what? I'm not sure. I didn't. I haven't really paid much attention to that. I um. Because I don't have an irrigation system and I don't have lawn, so I, I really didn't. I should have paid a little more attention to that. But um, 
I would Is think it would have been in the paper. Call to find out? The water management district should have it. Um, I can see whether or not I can bring it up um, and find out for us. Uh, you know, here in a couple minutes. Oh, yeah. No, that's our burn. Thing. That's our burn ban. Um, but. Yeah, you know, on the days of the week, I'm not sure if they did an odd even. I'll see if I can find it. Larry's going to see if he can look it up for us um, and and find out, and we'll and we'll let everybody know on that. But like I said, if you when you are going to water, make it make it count. Do it you know early in the morning because I think they've even got it limited to one hour, uh, or that may just be down the villages. See, I hear a lot more stuff sometimes right, from down right, there right, right. only because that's where I work. And so, you know, their restrictions may stick in my head more because I'm talking to those people a lot more often. But, um, you know, make that make that watering count. Do that real early in the morning. Check your irrigation system if you've got one. Make sure that it is putting out the quantity of water that it's, you know, that you think it is. So that when you're, yeah. when you're doing that watering, make that, that good three quarters to one inch of water on that ground. Um, and you know, and and realize that yes, the grasses may go dormant, but if we begin to get our afternoon showers, we're set. We'll we'll be good. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I know. I know some of, some of my neighbors. What they do now, when when the restrictions uh, uh, apply to us, they what they do is they just uh, water longer in each each section. I mean, they turn it up to an hour and a half from an hour. You know. Well, that sometimes on this, I know one. Like I said, I'm not sure if it was strictly down there in the villages. They're actually limiting to try to cut the quantity of water down so they don't want water people watering uh for two or three hours they want you to water an hour and that's yeah. it you know because putting two or three inches of water down is really not going to do any good it's going to get down past that root zone and you've just dumped water on the ground that's all yeah See, real quickly, another yeah. question. I, I've got a, a, a nice neighbor down the block, and, and she's always had trouble growing plants in the house, you know, flowers and this, that, and whatnot. And, and I, she always kind of says, well, do you have any little clues? And I, I said, well, I don't know. I, 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 I was thinking that, you know, she waters, she's got a septic system in, in a well, and she's, you, she, you know, she's got that salt machine in the, in the, in the garage in her, right. and mixing in with, with the water, and I think she's using that water, and I think that's hurting her plants. Um, yes, if she's using, yeah, the salt, the, if it's a salt softener, yes, it's not good to water your plants with that uh, water. Not, you know, not, outside is one thing because they'll get rain and stuff like that, but house plants and stuff, that builds up because it yeah. can't get extra water. So usually if people have house plants, um, they need to at least occasionally take them out, you know, oh, if their salt system hopefully is not hooked to their outside faucets also, but take them outside yeah. and, and, you know, water them with the non softenered water or buying a jug of uh, drinking water, you know, from the, from the store and watering plants yeah. like that occasionally in order to flush that out. That's just the same way as overusing liquid fertilizers. You eventually kill the plant because you have put so much salt into that system. It just does that plant in and it can't can't uh, can't get, can't keep going on that, but um, yeah, we're. Uh, I'll tell her uh, that we had this conversation and to use regular water, you know, buy buy a gallon or two from the store or whatever. Yeah, yeah, and, and I mean, see if she doesn't have more luck. Sure, sure, and I mean, you can save your you know your your empty water jugs if she gets one or two, and she can either you know collect when we have rain, collect some rainwater, yeah. uh, and yeah. and use that way. I mean, I'm really I I hope that. Uh, more people are are coming up with um, the rain barrels and things like that. Um, I believe they're still available at our extension office, so that people can set that up. That if we are getting some showers, you you know it may not water everything you have, but it may, may take care of your house plants, especially if you're on a water uh, softener system or if you have other container pots where it's something you need to water a little more often. Plants that are in the ground don't need uh, near as much water as um, you know as potted plants and Larry just got our, our watering restriction days and okay. we're in the daylight savings time portion so odd number addresses um, where is it odd number addresses is one that ends one three five of course <laughs> uh, <laughs> these days depend on whether or not you had odd or even okay time of year let's see homes with odd numbers we're in daylight savings time. They still have us at two days a week. 
So this, oh, so we- yeah, on on odd numbered uh, houses is Wednesday, Saturday. Water only when needed and not between 10, p- 10 a.m. and 4 a.m. or 4 p.m. No more w- one, no more than one hour per zone. Uh, restrictions apply to private wells and pumps, ground and surface water, and water from public and private utilities. Some exemption, some exceptions to apply. And that's St. Jo- so that's the St. John's River Water Management District. And, uh, and according to the city yeah, of Ocala, if I could just add, it says okay. all, all of Marion County, including the city of Ocala, follows the St. John's River Water Management District. Okay. But the exceptions are the villages and the city of Donellan. And they follow the oh. Southwest Florida Water okay, Management Okay, they're on Swift Mud. Yeah. Okay. So we're not on restriction, and uh, we can still water twice a week. Is that what we're? we're that's doing? that's what I'm that's what I'm seeing on this because he just printed that, and it's uh, the watering restrictions. It's still on your your um, your odd and even kind of things. If you're yeah. if you're an odd numbered house, you're Wednesday and Saturday. But you know, no more than one hour per zone. Uh, and and really, if you can cut back. Your usage, knowing that you know, just you can let your lawn go a little bit more dormant if you you know if you can, um, or water thoroughly. Your shrubs and things like that don't need extra water. If they've been in the ground more than two years, they really yeah. once every ten days to two weeks is is more than sufficient water and then if we begin to get any rain which we've had a little bit of rain if we get begin to get any kind of rain y- you can turn those zones off you know and and yeah. we all need to do what we can to uh you know to uh you know keep our water usage down you know i know you see right. in yeah. some in some areas you'll see golf courses with water going a lot of time that's reclaimed water and that falls under different guidelines. Uh, commercial businesses fall under a different guideline than residences. Uh, agricultural falls under a different regulation. So you can't just go screaming at you know the farmer or the golf course that they're using water. You don't know the regulations and what kind of water they're actually using. They may be using right. you know reclaimed water and things like that. But if you do see a business like non-residential businesses. Uh, have Tuesday and Friday. If you see their their irrigation systems on at at noontime or one o'clock in the afternoon, it might be the thing and not just going in and say, "Hey, listen, um, I don't know if you know it, but your irrigation's going, and um, you know we're all trying to conserve. Don't be mean about yeah. it, but <laughs> you know, just remind so, them they may they may not ha- they may not know anything that, about uh, it during the uh, high time of the day. Uh, you lose so much water, the evaporation is that Ex- the reason? exactly yeah. It's evaporation, and the plants can't take it up quickly enough because it is that hot. And and okay. so yeah, it's it's hot. I mean it's um, yeah. Just the the plants can't utilize it quickly enough. So the best thing to do the best time to water is actually between four a.m. and six a.m. And that way. The water's down at the coolest part of the day. There's no sun shining on it. But as the sun comes up, it begins to dry the leaf portion of the plant, of the lawn, of anything. And that way, that helps to slow down the progression or does not encourage fungal issues that can come up if you're watering at uh, 6 p.m., to 7 p.m. and that grass stays wet all night long, it actually will. Yeah. The grass will stay, and then you start to introduce fungal issues. Okay. Well, thanks a lot for your information. I know Larry wants to go to a commercial, so thanks Ta- a lot, you guys. You're welcome. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. I don't know that I want to. I just well, it, we, sort of have to. Have to try to keep on time. It's part somehow. of my job. There you go. <laughs> All right. Uh, we'll be right back. The phone lines are open. Remember, Carol Ann is here till 10 o'clock, so we've got plenty of time to ask questions. If you'd like to do that, the number is 622-9622. We'll be right back. The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accidents. On this Tuesday, a partly sunny day, but there'll be a couple of thunderstorms around in the afternoon. The high 89 at the coast, 94 inland. Tuesday night will be partly cloudy, though 70 inland, 75 at the coast. For Wednesday, times of clouds and sun with a couple of thunderstorms around. Mainly a shower, though, at the coast, the high 88 to 92. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Joe Lundberg. 
Interfaith Emergency Services has been around since 1983 and it prides itself on being 100% donation-based and receives no government funding for day-to-day operations. Interfaith currently helps out with food for kids, shelter programs for homeless, educational programs at the Learning Center. Interfaith is always looking for donations. They're always in need of food and clothing. To contribute, call 352-629-8868 today. They've served our country. They've kept us free, and they need your help. We're sitting in Veterans Park. You can't sit here not realizing that you're surrounded by heroes. There are a lot of heroes in our community. A lot of heroes, unfortunately, are not in good financial shape. They're hurting both physically and financially. We step in and help directly. Our role is to reach out to them. We're there to help the veterans. We do counseling. We do outreach. Sometimes it's just coming into the office and sitting down and saying, hey, I've got a problem, and you're talking to another veteran who understands that problem. Everybody who works for the Vets Helping Vets are awesome, and they are so kind to everybody. They're like my second family. They really are. They have been there during the holidays. I have gotten unexpected visits, assistance. Vets Helping Vets of Marion County needs your help. Call today, 352-433-2320 and pledge your support to Vets Helping Vets of Marion County. It really has been a blessing. As this academic year comes to a close, the folks at the Voice of South Marion want to say hats off to graduates for diploma, program, certification, or degree. Your hard work deserves recognition. Let's also congratulate the friends and family that helped along the way. Learning is a lifelong process, so as you complete this phase, the Voice of South Marion says congratulations on a job well done and best wishes for a successful future. The most trusted name in news, Fox News, every half hour, only on 96.3 FM, 1370 AM, The Source. All right. Oh, my gosh. 26 minutes after 9 already. 79 degrees. Caroline is here. Caroline Baldwin answering your questions. Caroline, of course, is a a master gardener and a motorcycle chick. (laughs) Did you see the Rolling Thunder news from Washington, D.C.? I did. That was amazing, huh? It is. It is. I think this was... What they say, the 30? 30 year? something, yeah. 30, yeah, yeah, yeah it's I don't amazing. remember how many. Yeah, they've been doing it a long time. Have yeah. you ever done that? No, but it's. it's. But you've done a, a local version of that, right? Where a lot of motorcycles oh, get together. Oh, I mean, yeah, we, we yeah, get together to and different right. Yeah, show us support either to uh, yeah. someone who's uh, you know, been injured or, or you know, was going through medical problems or anything, you know, and, and have done escorts of the traveling wall right, when it's been right, around. Yeah. But. So. Something about motorcycles. Now, do yeah. they have to be Harleys? Or could no, you? Uh, we have a trike. We have and Volkswagen who makes, power. Who, who makes the trike? We did. Oh, you built your own? Yeah. So yeah. it doesn't have that rumbling sound of a Harley? No, it sounds like a Volkswagen. <laughs> oh, it's a Volkswagen engine. Yeah. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah. So the, uh, yeah. I know I'm not much of a car guy. It's a car rear end of a Volkswagen with a front end of a Honda. and. So, Honda. okay, everybody's going to laugh at me now because I don't know this stuff. <laughs> but is a, is a motorcycle typically air-cooled like a Volkswagen is? Um, that, well, yeah. There, some of the newer ones, though, have radiators. Oh, they now. do? Yeah, the new Harley. Yeah, the new, but yeah they, they, all, they used to be air-cooled. And that used to be some issues. I don't remember seeing a radiator on my brother's. There, there's um, no, not not especially if it was older, but the newer. I'm trying to think of what year they they started coming in with with radiators, but they have radiators now. We have a phone call. Good morning. You're on the air with Caroline. Rolling thunder. I have every fall at my house because they do the hospice run. Oh really? Yeah. And when they appear, when they show up in the neighborhood, you start looking. You think you're being invaded. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow! All true, Larry. Well, you, thank you. Thank you, Thanks. Frank. Thank you. I think Frank is a motorcycle rider too. Thank you. Think? I think Robin said he broke his leg putting his motorcycle on his truck. Oh. Are you still there, Frank? No, he's not no, there. I think yeah. that's what she's telling me. Yeah. yeah. We are up against the bottom of the hour yeah. already. Um. We will take a little break in about a minute. I wanted to uh, mention that we do have a Bob Wines, yeah. thank you, Camellia Gardens and Nursery certificate. It is worth $20. For plant material only. F- yes, for plant material only. Um, and uh, my gosh, I have fallen in love with this place. I, I just yeah, love this get, place. Get, get you $20 off a shade tree. Yeah, well, it's, <laughs> yes. yeah, get you some shades the, in the yard. They're so nice over there. Oh, my gosh. Uh, go to Bob Wines. Go, go to, you know what? Go to their website. But better than that, go to their Facebook page. You will see. And speaking of Facebook page, so so call me if you want it. I I don't have a question. 
I, I can We're give it away. <laughs> Whoever calls, I'll answer the phone and you get it. Um, so let me, some, as you might know, we're doing this kind of different by than the, normal. By the skin of our teeth. I got to find the music. That's what, what should I do? Some heavy metal yeah, stuff? Yeah, give us the heavy metal. That heavy metal yeah, one? Yeah, give us Here the heavy metal. All right, all right, we'll be right back. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Stay tuned for news. We'll be right back with Caroline. If you want the $20 certificate, the number is 622 We'll be right back. News Radio. I'm Lillian Wu. The president pushing back against Russia-related stories. Already this morning, the president up and tweeting, writing out the following quote, Russian officials must be laughing at the U.S. and how a lame excuse for why the Dems lost the election has taken over the fake news. Fox's Blake Berman, the New York Times and Washington Post reporting son-in-law Jared Kushner is being looked at by congressional and federal investigators for contact he had in December with a Russian banker. Kellyanne Conway on Fox and Friends this morning would not comment on that story, only to question the source. One paper in particular, three times in a row, relied upon information that was immediately batted down as false. We're also learning that White House Communications Director Michael Dubke has resigned, and golfer Tiger Woods out with an explanation for his arrest on a DUI charge in Florida, blaming an unexpected reaction to prescription medication. Fox News, we report, you decide. For me, it was the big S class from the 90s. Beautiful. My friend's dad had one. The SL. All of the SLs. I've been watching those since I was a kid. I think the 1971 SC was the first Mercedes that just blew me away. Everyone remembers the first time they saw one, and the day they began to long for a Mercedes-Benz of their own. Well, that day may be a lot closer than you think. With a certified pre-owned Mercedes-Benz, you can experience the luxury, the unparalleled safety, the performance, and the style Mercedes-Benz is famous for at a price you can afford. Beautiful SUVs, sedans, coupes, and convertibles that are factory certified and covered by an unlimited mileage warranty for up to three years, so you can drive without a worry for as far as you like. And during the certified pre-owned sales event going on now through May 31st, you can receive two years of complimentary prepaid maintenance and special financing available through Mercedes-Benz Financial Services, only at your office authorized Mercedes-Benz dealer. You've waited long enough. See your authorized Mercedes-Benz dealer for complete details and limitations on certified pre-owned warranties. Frogs are so hoppy, it's because they don't smoke or have COPD, otherwise they would be flip floppy. If you want to quit smoking to prevent yourself from croaking, come to a better you for a good acupuncture poking. Call me, Dr. Erica Olstein, with a better you healthcare to stop smoking today at 352-615-5566. 352-615-5566. Career Source Citrus Levy Marion brings together business and community partners, economic development leaders, and educational providers to connect employers with qualified, skilled talent and job seekers with employment and career development opportunities. Tune in the first and third Wednesday of each month at 9:30 a.m. to Career Source Citrus Levy Marion and learn how they can help you. Your home is safe. Or is it? AA Lock, Dock, and Security. The name has been a staple in Ocala since 1985. Do you have the right equipment in place to have peace of mind when you are at home or away? AA Lock, Dock, and Security has the right people to install and monitor your home or business. Call today for a free on-site security analysis. Call 867-1965. AA Lock, Dock, and Security. 219 Northwest 10th Street. 867-1965. Everybody's looking for BOGOs these days, and Bob Wine's Camellia Gardens gives you plenty of buy one, get one deals this week. Just listen. Knockout roses, buy one, get one at half price. All blooming hanging baskets, buy one, get one at half price. Bob has Confederate Jasmine, that's your favorite ground cover, buy one and get one free. Check out our old-timey greenhouse, and you'll see glazed pottery, a great selection, all 20% off. Inside, you'll find a wonderful selection of fountains and waterfalls and wind chimes. Tons of stuff that's perfect for Dad for Father's Day. Come get your share of all the BOGOs and check out this week's ad at BobWinesCamelliaGardens.net 
Then head on over to Bob Wines Daily Till 4, Saturdays Till 2. Bob Wines Camellia Garden, Southeast 38th Street, Ocala, in the same blooming place since 1952. At Earth Fair, we don't carry any food that's bad for you. So you could shop here blindfolded, knowing that everything is 100% clean and good for you. In fact, we carefully select everything in the store as if your life depends on it. Because it does. Laurie from Earth Fair will be on the air during AM Ocala Live coming this Wednesday at 11.05 a.m. with weekly deals and information just for you. Live longer with Earth Fair. The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accidents. On this Tuesday, a partly sunny day, but there'll be a couple of thunderstorms around in the afternoon. The high 89 at the coast, 94 inland. Tuesday night will be partly cloudy, though 70 inland, 75 at the coast. For Wednesday, times of clouds and sun with a couple of thunderstorms around. Mainly a shower, though, at the coast, the high 88 to 92. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Joe Lundberg. Right, let's take a quick look at the weather forecast. 80 degrees, well, he just gave us the weather forecast, didn't he? But it's 80 degrees right now. Temperatures climbing to 93 today, and that's pretty much something you can expect all week long. Yep. Add to the mixture about a 30 to 50% chance of rain. Depending and on you where the, you're at. you got the whole yep. week forecast, and it's almost there, always in the afternoon. That's it. Yeah, well, that's when the sea breezes, the, the Atlantic and, and Gulf Coast sea breezes collide somebody gets some rain and we let's, need. yeah that's what we need i mean yeah. you look out now and, and you're seeing to me the skies that we usually see in july and august that hazy hot yeah sky yeah, yeah, and yeah. and even this morning uh i think was it this morning yeah the sun when it was coming up was just behind this haze of cloud and it's like wow that's you know dog days of summer and it's not even june the first um but yeah, stay hydrated out there. If you're gonna, you know, if you're gonna be going outside, make sure you have something. You know, drink. I think they tell you to drink water uh, 20 minutes before you go out, and then like every 10 minutes, or just having 10, 20 minutes, a sip of water or so. Because once you feel thirsty, you're already dehydrated. So I want everybody to be safe out there. Don't overdo it. If you do have a big project kind of thing, do it early in the morning um, while it is cooler. Get some help to do it if it's a project a little bigger than what you you know what you think you can handle or or even do think you can handle it yourself get some help you know ask a neighbor for a hand or a friend um you know just you know be safe you know stay healthy out there it's it's not worth uh, the garden's not worth getting sick over the burn ban by the way not to change the subject no, i was looking at the burn ban count um, uh, map right uh and it's interesting how uh and, and you, you sort of hinted at this before but there's a, a little tiny area of western Volusia County where there's no burn ban. Doesn't that, that yeah. make no sense at all? Yeah, I'm not or, sure. Or and like Bradford and Union Counties are... Are isolated in there. <laughs> yeah, right. And then there's a couple of sections that there's always prohibited. Yeah, Duval County Because always. those are, yeah, just open burning of yard debris is prohibited year-round in ca- per county ordinance. But that's, you know... Um, I don't know if it's just that those areas got plenty of rain a few weeks ago, but again, I think Sumter County was one when the burn ban first went on that they were the only one exempt uh, or, you know, you know, not within that. So. Yeah, they were. They had kind of their own little deal going. Over. But again, I still wouldn't be doing any burning. Uh, well, and we are still under the burn ban, even if it were lifted. Um, you know, go, go recycle that yard waste right now. Take yeah. it, have it chipped up. It'll become mulch. You can turn around and 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 get it back from the county. You know, and and mulch and mulch yeah, around right. your fence line and under your trees and things like that. Um, one thing, thinking of mulch, um, something in it, and I never really thought of it this way, and I'm sure others hadn't until it was pointed out. And I'm going, wow, that's kind of obvious. Um, when you're putting mulch down on tree around your trees and shrubs and things like that. Don't get it too thick, and I'm not talking the volcano. I volcanoing uh, mulch has always been wrong. Always have known that that's the practice of taking and really mounding that up like a volcano, and the stem being the whole of the volcano. Uh, going any more than about two to three inches of mulch around your trees and shrubs actually makes it harder for rainwater or water to get to the root zone because it does have to get through that wood mulch and that wood mulch is initially going to absorb that water 
So if you have micro irrigation and you're using uh, mulch, you might want to run that underneath your mulch so that it's watering right down there at the root zone. Or even if you're using something up a little higher, make sure that you're not putting that mulch so thick that all that water that you're putting out there is actually just being absorbed by wood. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, and, and, I, and I hadn't really thought of it in that way until somebody had pointed it out that it has to first get through that before it can get to the ground. So, you know, you, you may even consider when the type of mulch that you're using, um, you know, with, with a smaller, a finer mulch, uh, again, is it may not float away. Uh, it's going to lock together. But how quickly is that going to get through there, to, that water to get through? So maybe even pulling that mulch back a little further from the trunks and the stems. I mean, you should keep it about two inches away anyway. Um, and on any newly planted tree or shrub, you want to really just whatever the root ball was that came out of the pot, you want your mulch to come to the outer edge of that so that you can water that root zone because that's where those roots are at. They're not out three or four feet away unless the pot was that big. Um, but, you know, you may even consider pulling that mulch back a little bit here while we're having a dry season uh, so that your water is being efficiently put down there at the roots and not just watering your mulch. Mulch doesn't need to grow. <laughs> mulch yeah. doesn't need to yeah. grow. No, nope, sure doesn't. That they, yeah. The uh, phone line is open if you'd like to call in and ask a question or just chat with Carol Ann. It doesn't have to be a question. The number is 622-9622. By the way, thank you uh, to uh, Rick. Rick is the uh, winner of the the uh, right. gift certificate yep. to Bob Wines Community Gardens yep. and Nursery. And if and if anybody was on the Facebook page, because you uh, you mentioned Bob Wines Facebook page. Uh, oh uh, yeah. Kathy Snyder posted a video the and I saw it the other day actually, and it's a lizard eating a dragonfly, and and I you know they're they're both predator creatures, and but I do love the dragonflies. But it is one of those things. It it's really was pretty cool, but it's still... I've been posting an update of my uh, apple tree right, and a coffee cup tree, on right, your page. Right, so right. I, and I did one last week, even yes, though you weren't Yes, yes, I did. I saw that. Yes, I did see that. So I need to put the new one on. Put a right. new one on. And I had posted a couple of small watermelons that are, that are growing and doing well. Um, they're in a raised bed, a raised fabric bed so that's uh to me it's it's new uh, i don't guess it's a new technology it's a, just a different way of of planting of making a raised bed and um they seem to be doing very well i, I can't remember the name so i of the ones i i did um i think one's called crimson sweet it's more of a bush it's a smaller vine and more of a bush uh watermelon so it's good for smaller areas and these ones the bed itself is um oh i think it's like 13 um just over 13 square feet and the plants are staying contained in that so they haven't taken off i have turned one around so where it was trying to go out and and hit the ground and i didn't want it on the ground because i didn't want to mow it over kind of thing i didn't want anybody you know get the weed whacker near it or anything like that so picked it up put it back in there and they're doing well so watermelons are doing well it's getting a little hot in the garden i was picking some uh green beans this morning i'm trying to think of what's gonna you know what's gonna be next we're coming into june there's not a whole lot that's going to um thrive in that june july august um temperatures and the amount amount of sun i mean in su for june they're saying that you can plant collards eggplant mustard okra peppers southern peas new zealand spinach and turnips um I think I'm going to try to get a hold, actually, of peanuts because uh, peanuts will grow this time of year too, or southern peas. I have okra growing. I'm, you know, I can't use that much okra. Uh, I only like it up to a point. You know, I can't eat it every day. Did you see the story uh, this morning of the young man who gave his girlfriend what he thought were pretty flowers, and it was purple kale? <laughs> oh no, I had not. That's <laughs> well. That is a pretty. It's it's not a flower, but it is pretty. They well, she, are yeah, pretty. She, she said, "Look what my boyfriend gave me. He gave me lettuce." And then everybody on Facebook said, "That's not lettuce. That's, that's kale." kale. Yeah. Well, in a way, you could say that he was doing her a health benefit too, yeah. with all the health craze yeah. of everybody eating kale. But that was an <laughs> ornamental kale, um, so probably not as palatable. And I'm not sure if. It 
fits item in pattern. <laughs> so, but I couldn't blame them. It looked pretty to yes, me. Yes, yes, they uh, are very pretty. I, are, I they, thought, well, that's good. All right, I'm trying to put my apple tree in a coffee cup on, on, on your site. Apple tree in a coffee Let's cup. Let's see, what do I call it? I call in a group, right? And then I go in the garden. In the garden. There it is. Yeah, you and go. Just I, find it. And my, my weekly update on <laughs> on my on the apple coffee. tree i mean my, wait, my coffee cup apple tree i'll just say wait, it that wait, way wait, wait. larry larry's <laughs> johnny appleseed over here and and one day we hey, will. Hey, one day. I'm, you know, day, yeah. I'm going to retire from this thing called they, radio. Radio, and you, you will have I don't know what apple, you're going to be doing, but I'm going to sit under my apple, apple tree. Apple tree and, and have a nice cold cold glass of apple juice. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're up against a break here. I, yes, uh, it does look like oh, it. Oh, we are. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Okay, okay. Well, let's uh, let's put some pretty music on. What do you what do you want to do today? The, the jazz? <clears throat> Whatever let's you see. want. All right. We're going to be right back <laughs> with Carolyn. <laughs> does that sound like that? Right back. Just a moment, folks. We'll, we'll return after these special messages. Sit down with your apple tree coffee cup and enjoy the view. We could we could do it that way. We, oh, we could do it this way. Wait. We'll, we'll be right back. There we go. We got more right. garden news <laughs> with Carolyn, the biker chick. <laughs> we'll be right back. The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accidents. On this Tuesday, a partly sunny day, but there'll be a couple of thunderstorms around in the afternoon. The high 89 at the coast, 94 inland. Tuesday night will be partly cloudy, though 70 inland, 75 at the coast. For Wednesday, times of clouds and sun with a couple of thunderstorms around. Mainly a shower, though, at the coast, the high 88 to 92. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Joe Lundberg. What'd you get me for Father's Day? Well, let's see. I like ham, turkey, roast beef, and especially meat falling off the bone ribs. Well, I'm not cooking. Uh, clearly, eating is more your forte. So what do you say we let Honey Baked Ham and Cafe do the cooking? They've got everything we both like. Mmm! What's the address? I'll go pick it up. 2709 Southwest 27th Avenue. Right there behind Best Buy. As a matter of fact, they even cater, so I'll make this one step easier by calling 861-0011 right now. Honey Baked Ham and Cafe in Ocala. Tell them Dan sent you. Tell them Joe sent you. Get 10% off. Cookies, 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 cookies. We go cookie eating cookies. When you want something special and fun for any occasion, get cookies. King Cookie in the Paddock Mall in Ocala will make a delicious, fun-filled delight just for you. So next time you're in the mall, stop by King Cookie or call 352-237-2557. KingCookieOcala.com. Customized cookies, cakes, and more. King Cookie. Eating cookies, eating cookies. We're so happy eating cookies. Cookies! Hello, Gorgeous. Hi, this is Becky at Hello, Gorgeous Salon. We are located in the heart of downtown Ocala, right next to the historic Marion Theater. I'd like to invite you to stop by and see our new boutique area and meet our staff of professional stylists. Here at Hello Gorgeous, we are ready to update your look with the latest trends. And with summer here, it's the perfect time to brighten up your look. So make your appointment now for those highlights and Brazilian blowout. But don't stop there. We are a full service salon offering manicures, pedicures, and facials also. So if you've been searching for a salon to call your own, come and see us at Hello Gorgeous Salon. We are located at 48 South Magnolia Avenue in downtown Ocala right next to the Marion Theater. So call today and set up your appointment at Hello Gorgeous Salon at 351-5358. That's 351-5358. And don't forget, we also do men and children's cuts too. 351-5358. Hello Gorgeous. We all know that sound means there's going to be some need for collision repair work and soon. What you may not know is that it's your choice where to have that collision work done, not the other guy's insurance company. Because your vehicle is much more than just transportation. It's like a family member. So don't bring it to just any chain collision center. Bring it to Lyle's Collision Service. When it comes to getting your vehicle back to 100%, you can count on Lyle's Collision Service. They're not some fly-by-night chain company. They're a family-owned and run collision center with over 33 years of experience. Working with collision repairs and vehicle restoration, Lyle's Collision only uses quality parts and doesn't take shortcuts like some other companies. They take pride in getting the job done right and in a timely manner. They specialize in insurance claims and they strive to get your vehicle back to you as soon as possible. So the next time you hear this, remember it's your choice. And the choice is clear. Lyle's Collision Service. 
All right. Uh, I'm so used to looking to my left to find out the time. I, I guess it's 11 minutes before 10 o'clock, and Carol Ann is here. If you have uh, something you want to talk to Carol Ann about your garden or a garden or any garden, the number is 622-9622. And, and it's just it's uh, one of those weird times of year here that in, in, in the garden, and especially this year with, with as dry as it's been, you know, I don't remember being on the air when it's been this dry, or maybe we didn't talk about it then. I don't know. Taboo. We didn't talk about the fires. You mean the big? No, that, the big yeah, ones? That, no. But I mean, just the drought type of thing that uh, you know just seems to be that you know here with the end yes, of May. Yes, we were. Remember, I told you I walked through uh, what used to be called Lake Bonneville, and it was totally dry. Oh yes, yeah, yeah. Uh, but I think that's actually improved since yeah. then. Wow. I, I don't know if it's completely back. But right. But, even but I literally walked to where the middle of the lake, lake used to was be. At when yeah, it I mean, it was a dry. puddle. It wow. became, there was not much of a uh, left. Uh, that's, yeah. Oh, we that's do have a, a phone call. We got a call. Good. Good morning. You're on the air. Hi, you call back real yeah. quick. Uh, you guys were talking about mulch, mulch a little bit ago. Uh, Caroline, what is your feeling? Where, where we live here, we have uh, lots of pine trees. Right. And a lot of the, the folks in here uh, use those pine needles for oh. mulch. Oh, yeah. Uh, what is your and that, is that any good or not? Oh, sure, sure. It's slow to decompose, so it's a, it's good. They don't, uh, they don't float away. I mean, they, they may, yeah, you know, they may move a little bit. You know, if we had heavy, heavy rains, but when you've got, you've got pine trees, um, God kind of gave trees what they all, everything that they needed to eat. They take up things, and when they drop their their spent needles to the ground, uh, rake yeah. them up and put them back over their area. And as they break, they're still feeding that tree. You can use them anywhere you would use any wood mulch or any other mulch that you would you would do. They're they're not any more susceptible to any uh, probably a little bit less on some things uh, insect problems because um, they're not a large enough piece of material for termites to be attracted to. Um, they're still going to hold moisture down and and weeds at bay uh, if weeds come uh, start to come up through them they're actually fairly easy to pull them out of there uh, because of yeah. just the the intertwining it becomes almost like a woven uh, section of, of mulch but yeah pine straw I mean we, we sell pine straw people buy it to bring out and use on their on their landscapes Oh my gosh! So, does it does that rot away by itself at times? So you have to replenish it, or, it's, it, or it, it, it will. Like it it will, but it's going to take a while. It will take a long time. It's slow to break down. Um, if you wanted to make it or be able to say refurbish it at, on an annual basis, I would probably rake it out, put it on something hard where you could run it over with a lawnmower a few times, and then you could actually add it back into flower orbits and just and, oh. and you know and. and dig yeah. it in into your spring beds or your fall beds uh, and then put fresh down because if you've got a regular supply of it coming out of trees um, might as well use it same way with oak leaves there's no reason why you can't use the oak leaves for mulch it's not going to hurt the tree uh, it's not going to hurt your flower beds it's not going to change your pH uh, as everybody always used to say what those trees are growing in is the pH that they need what they're dropping off is going to help to continue with that pH and that nutrient level. So it's, you know, it's something that can be, you know, utilized. If people want to try to compost some of those things, they do need to run them over or run them through a shredder um, and make it a smaller material because they are slow to break down. The oak leaves and the and the pine needles are. Right. Oh, oh, okay, very good. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Yeah, use Final. use what you ha you. yeah use what you have. I mean, even if you're not using herbicides and a, and a ton of fertilizer on your lawn, your grass clippings occasionally. If if maybe you've gone away and the grass got a little too long and you need to catch it, you know, before you you know on this time because you don't want to that much grass piling up on the ground. Use that around the flower beds or put it in your compost bin or just take you know if you've got a flower bed, spread it around to where you can work it down in the soil. The grass itself might steal some nitrogen temporarily but you know, you'll be all right you know on it's breaking down but normally if you're mowing on a regular basis you don't need to get your grass clippings just let them i let never them do, do. no nope, no nope, just let them feed the yard i mean whatever you're cutting off it's um i'll have to try to find that that little um uh just sort of a, a funny thing of you know how's this grass stuff doing and they say well they keep put you know they they cut it and they feed it and then when they cut it they bag it up and they throw yeah, it yeah, away yeah. and the leaves off the tree 
reason, you know, as, as it said, you know. I have a secondary reason for, for cutting your grass, by the way. The way. What's that? You, you get to examine your air conditioner. Oh, okay. <laughs> my air con- somebody stole all my, the copper tubing and everything out of my air conditioner. Oh, that's not good. Uh, well, it hasn't been working in years. Oh, okay. But I went back there, you know, cutting the grass, and I said, right. huh. How long is this? I mean, I mean, right. Somebody opened it up and got and all the stole all your copper. The out stuff of it. they can sell, I guess. Wow. I don't know. Yeah. So if your air conditioner ever suddenly stops working, <laughs> that might be why. Take a look for your copper tubing. Uh, that can be. That's right, a bad right. thing. Does that that's, ever happen to you? Not to us, but I've heard of. Yeah, you know, where. Um, I mean, it's, it's easy. It's an easy target, I guess. Oh it's sitting yeah, outside, it sits, right? sits outside. Sits at the back of someone's home. Usually not under a window. Um, Mine so is right like, under my window, but under, I'm never home. I'm, I'm, right, I'm always right. here yeah, or somewhere or else. Somewhere else. Yeah. So. That's okay. I mean, I, I haven't had air conditioning in years. So no. It just sits survive. there. Yeah. They're expensive, those things. Yes, they are. It's, expen- it's easy to just open a window. Open a window, turn the fans on. <laughs> of course, like you say, you're never home. So. <laughs> I know, but when I, I sleep at home. Yes, yes. I, I do like the window open when I sleep. Yeah. And, and turn a fan on, and everything should be good. Uh, gosh, the time flies, isn't it? It, it sure does. I keep trying to watch because we got, you know, you don't have your. I don't have my normal line. clock, yeah. yeah. So we're paying attention and, and trying to, you know, trying to keep it going. Um, oh, what was I? Oh, I was going to say, you know, that um, in your, you know, it, yeah, in your beds and things, I keep looking out. I'm seeing how some of these plants are out here still look like they're stressed. I don't know. Those palms don't look real happy still. Uh, that one, <laughs> we lost that one palm out there, uh-huh. and and it looks like whatever might have have gotten that one might, you know, or it may just it could also be drought stress in here. Uh, the, these palms don't look real good uh, or real as happy as they could. Maybe I should put it. By the way, way. I, I told you that we're just about done with the uh, drawing of crowd. Yes. Yeah. Poster. Okay. Did you know that we had somebody send in a picture of girls from the Cafe Risque? No. I, I didn't tell you that? No. Okay, now I, I didn't draw them. Everybody right. said, yes, you should draw them, you should draw them. Nobody said you shouldn't, so I'm right. glad about that. Right. But I, if you see it, it's, I mean, I really modif- modestized I'd it. Modestized it? Okay. I made it modest, yeah. Okay. I mean, really, I did. But it was, not, I mean, they gave money, so right. I didn't want to say yeah, no. They wanted, right. Yeah, so. So that was, that's cute. It's on there, and and, uh, and you're on there, of course. Right, I'm on there. It's, uh, oh, yeah, that'd be so cool to see, see the whole thing it, it, all if rolled I, out. If I roll it out, it's longer than that hole out yeah, there. Yeah, oh, yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. I can imagine. That's a, that's a big drawing. Uh, and it's taken you quite a bit of time so and, and quite a bit of dedication yeah, and thank you. That. Thank you for uh, yeah. being part of it. It's just... Yeah, it's I'm, just, I'm, I'm it's glad it's done. I'll be honest yeah. with you. That's a lot of yeah, that's a lot of faces. That's a lot of drawing to have done. Did a lot I, of commitment. Did I did I tell you that there was a story about uh, plants being able to hear water? No. Okay. All right. There was a story, and I'm, I won't look it up because it'll take too much time. Right. But basically, it was, they did an experiment where they the the plant roots okay. were on the uh, opposite side of a piece of glass. Okay. So that the water couldn't be felt by the roots. Okay. And so they were putting water into the the other side. Okay. There was no way for the two for the dirt on the both sides to reach each other. Okay. And the roots started going toward the water. And so okay. they theorized, they concluded that it could hear, quote unquote, the water. It knew that the water was there, even though there was no way for it to feel it. Isn't that amazing? I would think. Well, I don't. I don't. I wouldn't say it could hear it. I would almost say feel the vibration. And if it was something that was like you say, a piece of glass or something between the two, that a temperature change in the container. Listen to you. Have, yeah, you should have been in the room with the scientists. Yeah. Maybe they said, oh, we didn't think of that. Yeah, that would be more of my thought. Is that it would feel the the just. Um, you know, electro- electrical impulses yeah, you know, can yeah, be yeah. felt, you know, that uh, insects will go to certain ones that, you know, plants will lean towards I just saw, things. Saw, and, saw and, and that, that yeah. is that is pretty. But I'm, I'm thinking moreover that it could feel the vibration if the water was going into a vessel on the other side. Right, right, or, right. Or onto the, that it could feel that or uh, a temperature change. All right, now, I, I don't have it in front of me. And right. But maybe they just played the sound. Maybe that's how come they said hear it but, I, I yeah don't but i don't yeah if you're actually doing water it would right but yeah, i mean because <laughs> how can you yeah that's kind of hard i don't know don't know that? yeah looks like we got about a minute and 10 about seconds about a minute and 10 which is just enough time for St- stanley spencer yeah is that his name look at that without yep. even seeing it yep. I, I know his name here we go here we go
Let's see. We can, we can get go. the good. We can get the good exit music. <laughs> Carolyn, once again, you did it. You have to work today? I do. Oh, yep, my Yep, sure do. Have to go right. in this afternoon. So. For those who don't know, Carolyn volunteers to do this radio show, and you need a medal, a plaque, a trophy, yeah. something to commemorate <laughs> a decade plus of doing this. Well, I, I got a T-shirt from the station. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Carolyn. Thank you, Larry. So you can visit Carolyn at Lowe's down in the Garden yeah, if Center. You go, go find me down there. In Lady Lake. Question, in Lady Lake, right. Which is right. not Summerfield. No, it's outside of Summerfield. It's, it's two different it's, it, Actually, you're in. Uh, it's uh, actually Sumter County, but we're just down, uh, just okay. down from. Is there is there a um, what do you call it a, a Lowe's in Lady Lake? Um, Summerfield? I mean. No. Okay. All right. No, it's it's uh, considered Lady Lake or the villages. All right. Well, this is WOCA Ocala. We'll be right back. Thank you, Carolyn. Yeah. News Radio. I'm Lillian Wu. The administration defends the president's son-in-law under fire for a Russia controversy, discussing the possibility of a private communication line with Moscow. It's very important to recognize that.